Hey, welcome in to the Saturday edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast. It's December 10th. Thomas Miller here. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to talk a little bit of financial astrology here with Ray Merriman's MMACycles.com newsletter. This is the free newsletter published on the website every week at this time. If you've been following this podcast, you know that I narrate audiobooks, and I've been narrating two audiobooks for Ray that are the forecast books for 2023. And I am in the, I like to call it the red zone of audiobook narrating. It's when you get into the last about 20% of the book, and you know you are marching that thing to the finish line. And that's exactly where I am today. So I am going to abbreviate today's newsletter, hit the high points so that I can save my voice and my time for hopefully finishing the second of Ray's two books for 2023. That will be exciting. Then I will get back and keep working on Fred Dodson's Clearing Entities book, and we'll all be uh, buttoned up, hopefully, before the holidays. All right, this week in the markets was interesting. So we had the full moon. We had a drop ahead of that. Often it comes behind it. And then, as markets often do when they drop or when they move substantially, they go sideways. And that's basically what happened. Here's what Ray has to say about it. I'm going to skip the articles. I would refer you to the, to the website, MMACycles.com. And I'll be telling you about these audiobooks as they come out here in the next uh, couple of weeks. So it says, last week's financial markets were a tug of war between the aggressive symbolism of a full moon conjunct Mars. Boy, we talked about that. It was even an occultation, a lunar eclipse of Mars on December 8th the 9th, caught between the passivity inclination of Neptune turning direct December 3rd, squared by Venus on December 4th, and will be squared by the Sun December 14th coming up. In other words, markets wanted to do something, go somewhere, but they didn't quite know what or where. And I'll tell you, for somebody that has Neptune on top of his sun, I can empathize. <laughs> Sometimes you just are, I don't know what to do. They are looking for a reason to go up, as they usually do in the third year of a presidential term. But they also fear that a recession is on the way due to rising rates to fight inflation and the reliability of an inverted yield curve in predicting recessions. <laughs> That's more Neptune confusion, right? How can the market go up if there is a recession where unemployment starts to rise? But so far, unemployment has not been a problem, despite the Fed's hike, hike, hike policies designed to make it a problem to solve the inflation problem. So many problems with no clear solutions except to create another problem. That's the way of Neptune under a Mars attack. Amen and amen. The haze of Neptune continues to cloud investors' outlook this week as the most prominent aspect will be the sun squaring Neptune on December 14th. This is one day after the next CPI or inflation report in the United States, a reading that is very likely to finally move markets off their cloud, or as it is, fog. <laughs> the Sun-Neptune square has a strong correlation to reversals in the Dow Jones Industrial Average within four trading days. And I would say reversal from what? <laughs> I tried to trade yesterday a little bit, just some scalping, and oh my gosh, talk about a tough day. Like all aspects with Neptune, this one can correspond with hopes and wishes about the future of equity prices. However, if it corresponds with a high or secondary high to the crest of December 1st and 2nd, it could lead to a sharp reversal down into and beyond the Jupiter-Uranus semi-square of December 23rd. In the past two passages of this aspect, which were May 11th and September 28th, the stock markets of the world were engaged in sharp sell-offs. Maybe it's different this time with Mars retrograde, but it would be wise to be alert just in case it does repeat a third time. After the Mars retrograde in January, our focus shifts to March 2023 when Saturn enters Pisces on March 7th and Pluto enters Aquarius on March 23rd. That's a lot of the theme of next year, as I've been reading in these 
forecast books for next year. Planets in signs represent psychological states of being, attitudes, and maybe even belief systems. There are probably more terms used in the study of psychology that relate to Saturn and its ruling signs of Capricorn and Aquarius, as well as to Neptune and its ruling sign of Pisces. Saturn in Pisces, for instance, can symbolize paranoia, especially delusions of persecution, where one can easily fall into the trap of victimization. Or it can represent spiritual, Pisces, mastery, Saturn. It's all a matter of how one trains their mind. In terms of the economy, Saturn tends to depress or indicate a lack in whatever sector or commodities it rules. In this case, Pisces is associated with inflation, so inflation may very well come down. Pisces also has to do with crude oil, so either the price of crude oil comes down or the availability of supplies dries up again, as seems to be the case with the strategic petroleum reserves of the United States, unless the president gives the okay to replenish those supplies that he emptied last year putting the U.S. in a vulnerable geopolitical situation in the event of a war. I'll have a comment on that in a minute. Pluto in Aquarius may show an escalating threat of war, especially when one considers the last time it made its 20-year transit through Aquarius. The years were 1777 to 1797. That coincided with major revolutions in the world, including the United States and France. Furthermore, Aquarius is a sign of detachment and alienation, and if taken to extremes, it can exhibit psychopathic behaviors. On the other hand, Aquarius is also the sign of invention, discovery, and a sense of brotherhood or sisterhood with the masses. As Pluto moves towards its trine with Uranus, the ruler of Aquarius, in Gemini in 2026, this heightened awareness and inventiveness can lead to a renaissance in communications, science, and the arts. So, we have two parallel but competing paradigms unfolding for humanity over these next three years. One track is that of destruction and loss by leaders of the world who may suffer from paranoia and exhibit psychopathical characteristics that pose a danger to the masses, even to the point of wars. The other is a path of saintliness and virtue, altruism, led by other leaders who are able to exhibit great discipline and mastery over their behaviors with great patience and propel the world into an era that may be likened to a renaissance. The challenge will be identifying those who were authentic versus those who are delusional and fraudulent. Both are among us, maybe even within us. In 2023 and 2024, Pluto will cross zero degrees of Aquarius five times. You may remember that as the supercharged degree of the new era, A-I-R-A, -A, which began when the 20-year synodic cycle of Jupiter and Saturn conjoined at that degree in December 21st of 2020 on the winter solstice. As far as how that may affect financial markets... Consider Pluto as the termination, the end, and the transformation of current forms of energy sources and the discovery of new forms of energy, Aquarius. There are other investment opportunities suggested here, too, like artificial intelligence, space exploration, and electric vehicles. But first, we have to ensure our survival against those in power who threaten to destroy humanity via war. It may sound heavy, ominous, and risky, but that is what Pluto in Aquarius is all about. With Pluto, there is no middle ground or appeasement. There is no gain or victory without risk. You're either all in or all out when Pluto is highlighted, as it will be from 2023 to 2026. You either choose a path of invention and creativity or one of destruction. In the end, creation always wins over destruction.
that ends the newsletter for this week. And I'm glad that he did a more macro approach because the market is kind of spinning its wheels right now. So we'll have to wait until that gets more traction. And this was a good time to get in the fun astrology helicopter and zoom up to 10,000 feet and take a look at the bigger picture. And this is exactly what I've been narrating is the breakdown or the dissection of what he gave the high level view here. So Pluto moving into Aquarius is something we're already seeing. This past week, under the full moon, 25 people thought they could overthrow the German government. Also, a rogue leader in Peru thought he could take over the country and fire the Congress. Well, he's sitting in jail, and so are the 25 in Germany. That's Pluto and Aquarius right there. That's the screwed-up system. That's the rebellion that says, I'm going to do something about this. I mean, just this urge, like this uncontrollable urge to protest, to revolt. That's Pluto in Aquarius and the authoritarian hand that right now has all those people in jail. That's going to be the conflict that's unfolding. It's already amazing how this is taking place. Also, all these volcanoes and some of the other natural disaster things will be part of that. Saturn moving into Pisces will have something to do with that. So we're in for some shakeups coming up here between now and the first quarter of this next year. No question. Now, he talked about crude oil. Let me just mention something. If it wasn't on your radar, President Xi Jinping from China went to Saudi Arabia this week. Talk about this. I told you that this full moon on the podcast, we talked about this full moon being a shaker. Xi Jinping left China this week, which he rarely does, and traveled to Saudi Arabia to sign oil deals against the United States. Now, you're also familiar with the BRICS alliance, right? This is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. That's BRICS, B-R-I-C-S, international effort, basically, to usurp the United States dollar as the world's reserve currency. Well, now it's looking like, what, Argentina, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and I believe that's it. There might be a couple more that came in just this week. I think I read an article that said that they have had 40-some applications that if all of this combines, the BRIC members would create an entity with a gross domestic product 30% larger than the United States, would encompass over half of the world's population and control 60% of the global gas reserves. Now, energy is a big, big deal. And folks... (laughs) I don't know where you are on the whole spectrum of that. Doesn't matter. If you can't fill up your car, your lifestyle changes. Look at what they're doing in Germany right now. They shut down all their nuclear plants. They're bringing coal back online. Why? Because the gas pipelines that were going to feed them this winter got blown up. And our own United States energy policy is under attack for the same kind of thing. I am not getting on a political soapbox here. I am not taking a political position. I am political agnostic. Neither side represents me, so I just observe. I got no skin in the game. In fact, my political position right now is I'm concerned for our freedom, and that's what I would fight for the most, is our freedom just to remain free. And that fits the astrology of what we just talked about. So while we're floundering around here, cutting our energy sufficiency back, the president of China is flying to Saudi Arabia to strike deals that are more favorable for China and less favorable for the United States. And I would just ask the rhetorical question, what in the world could possibly go wrong with that picture? So as you're doing your manifesting and your creating work, we need to really focus on this because I think this is one of the biggest movements against our personal freedom. And it's a real deal. And it is supported by the astrology. All right. We will keep an eye on it. I'm glad we're doing a daily podcast so we can follow all this stuff through. We're going to need it coming into this next year. Have a great rest of the weekend. Get some rest. Join us tomorrow night on Level Up at 8 p.m. If you would like on the Fun Astrology YouTube channel and our Facebook group. If you would like to join us, we'd love to have you. See you back on Monday.